The prequel to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory with Timothy Chalamet. Who needs that? Hmm. Trailer's out for it already. I couldn't let's have a look. You see, I'm something of a magician, inventor, and chocolate maker. So quiet up and listen down. Huh. I know things haven't been easy for you. They're gonna get better. You promise? Huh. I will have you know that I am a perfectly respectable size for an Oompa Loompa. Allow me to refresh your memory. Oh, I don't think I want to hear that. I need to see this movie! Welcome one and all from the far reaches of the internet. This is Rewind Reviews and in this video I'll be taking a look at one of the most anticipated movies of the entire year. And that movie is Wonka. Released in 2023 and based on the characters created by Roald Dahl. The latest confection featuring the magical and talented chocolatier sees a young Willy Wonka with dreams of opening a shop in a city renowned for its chocolate. Discovering that the industry is run by a cartel of greedy chocolatiers. Directed and co-written by Paul King alongside co-writer Simon Farnham. Wonka stars Timothy Chalamet, Calla Lane, Patterson Joseph, Matt Lucas, Matthew Bainton, Olivia Coleman, Tom Davis, Keegan Michael Key, Jim Carter, Raki Thakra, Natasha Rothwell, Rich Fulker, Sally Hawkins, Rowan Atkinson, Cobner Holbrook Smith, and Hugh Grant. This movie, I kid you not, might be one of the biggest surprises that I've had this year. When Warner Brothers announced that they were starting development on this movie, I was in the majority of audiences saying, Really? A Willy Wonka prequel movie with Timothy Chalamet? Outside of that, I didn't know anything else about this movie. I only really saw a couple of set pictures that had leaked online, as well as the official look that Warner Brothers unveiled, but that was really it. But I still was at least kind of interested in seeing what it was that they were doing with this movie, so it was something that I did keep my eye on. I love Roald Dahl stories, and when I was younger, I used to really enjoy the Gene Wilder movie from 1971. I'll even admit I've got a slight soft spot for the Tim Burton movie too. No, it's not brilliant, but it does have some good stuff in it, and a pretty awesome soundtrack too. So yeah, I was slightly curious about what it was that they were going to be doing with this movie. If only I'd looked at the credits. When the trailer for this movie released online, I don't think that I've ever had such a quick change of mind regarding a movie before when I saw who was writing it, who was directing it, who was producing it, who else was starring in it. Plus, on top of that, it did genuinely look really good. So good, in fact, that it became one of my most anticipated movies of the year. And you know what? Not only did this movie not disappoint, it is honestly even better than I thought it was going to be. Wonka is a prequel story to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and follows Willy Wonka before he becomes the famous chocolatier that we know from the original story. And across the movie we see him building up his reputation and locking horns with three other business owners that want him out of town. This isn't based on anything as far as I know, it is telling its own original story with some really fun ideas. But just before I proceed any further, I do need to give you a little bit of a heads up that this is going to be a spoiler free video for the most part. I do need to mention a few plot points and a few details here and there, but I'll try and keep it as vague as possible to not give anything away. Now with that out of the way, let's continue. I might as well address this now and get it out of the way. There is one question that I have seen a lot of people asking prior to this movie being released, and that question is, is this movie meant to be a prequel to the Gene Wilder film or not? I think that this can be seen as both, but at the same time I am slightly tilting more towards saying yes. There's definitely callbacks and a few good references to elements from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. From Wonka's mannerisms including his little staircase dance and how he swings his cane around, some of the chocolates and treats are from that movie such as the edible flower cups, the designs of the Oompa Loompas are pretty much identical to the Gene Wilder film, plus there's a a load of the same musical cues and songs throughout, but at the same time I do think that this can be seen as its own thing. It's an original story and focuses on what's happening in this movie as opposed to prioritising setups for what's going to happen in the future, and nor does it rely on nostalgia. I don't think you need to have seen any version of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, nor do you need any prior knowledge of Willy Wonka 
or the world of Roald Dahl in order to understand and enjoy this. This is a feel-good family musical that people of all ages can see and have fun with. And to answer the title of this video, yes, I would even go so far as to say that this is one of the best family movies of the year. Starring in this movie is a pretty all-star cast with a number of really big names and character actors all getting in on the fun. And leading the show as Willy Wonka himself is Timothy Chalamet. I'll admit this was one of the things that originally I wasn't really on board with as I've never really seen Timothy in a role like this before and that seemed to be the general consensus online when his casting was first announced. So you could say that me being surprised is a bit of an understatement because I really was not expecting just how good he actually is. He's wacky, optimistic and charismatic in a charming and slightly nutty way. Timothy's performance is really good, finding the right balance of echoing his predecessors whilst also being his own version of Wonka. I do think that they could have pushed the potentially insane bit of Wonka a little bit more in some places and there is one thing they do with Wonka in this that's a big part of the friendship that he develops with a character called Noodle played by Carla Lane that does get a bit of focus but they don't do too much with it and it doesn't really factor back into the story in a very big way apart from one very touching scene so I think that they could have done a tiny bit more there but I really really liked what they do with Wonka how his friendship with Noodle is handled and developed and how good Timothy's performance is he can dance he can sing and he manages to get his tongue around all the different tongue twisters and rhymes that are thrown at him. And even better, it all sounds natural when he starts talking like that. I loved what he was able to do and I'm genuinely glad that he was cast. Equally amazing is Calla Lane as Noodle, who kind of stumbles into Wonka's life. Likewise, she is great overall. I think Calla's performance is excellent. I like the dynamic and partnership that her character builds with Wonka as well as some of the other characters. She does have a proper impact on the story and even gets her own subplot that I'll quite openly admit brought a few tears to my eyes. Without giving anything away, I do think that it is a little predictable what her story involves, but there is an okay twist on it that wasn't completely where I thought it was going. I really liked her overall and she is a welcomed addition to this movie. Everyone in this movie is on top form. I will say that there are times where it can feel like some of the performances are a little bit theatrical and a little bit too over the top and that may or may not work for you. But there is no denying that everyone in this movie is having a load of fun. With performances from Jim Carter, Raki Thakra, Natasha Rothwell and Rich Fulker as a team that plays a large role in helping Wonka get to where he wants to be. And to my surprise, Olivia Coleman makes an appearance in this movie as a character called Mrs. Scrubbit as well as Tom Davis who plays a character called Bleacher. Both of them are absolutely fantastic. They really work well together. They do bounce off each other really well. And I really like what it is that they do add to this movie. There's a few little sprinkles of slightly darker elements like just very slightly darker elements as well as some little bits of comedy as well. I also thought it was really fun seeing Keegan-Michael Key in this too as the chocoholic chief of police. It's not a huge role by any means but he is entertaining and does get to have some fun with this. Plus I really liked Officer Attable as well played by Kobner Holbrook-Smith who balances out some of the more cartoonish elements. Only some, the main antagonists of this movie get to cheese things up in a really over the top but very funny way. The antagonists are made up of three chocolatiers from rivaling chocolate shops who secretly work together as the chocolate cartel. Making up the troublesome trio are Patterson Joseph as Slugworth, Matt Lucas as Prodnos and Matthew Bainton as Fickle Gruber. As I said earlier they are incredibly cartoonish, they are very over the top with these really wild mannerisms and facial expressions and then Matt Lucas of course putting on a really weird accent. Cherry? Well my God, they are so much fun to watch. I won't spoil anything about them, but I really enjoyed seeing how they work together, how the cartel operates, how they kind of have control over the authorities, and just how far they're willing to go to get rid of Wonka. I loved all three of them, especially what happens with Slugworth. They don't do as much with Prodnos and Fickle Group as they do with Slugworth, and they kind of act like his backup in a way, but I've got to be honest, all three of them, they are great, they are funny, they have great chemistry with each other and all three of them deliver absolutely brilliant performances. Everyone is genuinely on top form as I keep saying, even the smaller roles too. One of the things that really surprised me about this movie was seeing just how many British comedy actors actually have little cameos in this. If you've ever seen a TV comedy series called Ghosts, the UK version, not the US one, I couldn't really get into the US one to be honest. There's a few actors from that show that make little appearances in this movie, including 
including co-writer Simon Farnaby. As soon as I saw his name in the opening titles, I immediately said he's going to be in this. And I won't say what it is that he does in this, but it is a funny scene and I do love the payoff. Rowan Atkinson, who is one of my favourite comedy actors of all time, also has a little appearance in this and he did feature quite prominently in some of the trailers. It's only a small role that he actually has in this movie. He's playing a priest in the film, but it's Rowan Atkinson, so he is still memorable. Plus, Sally Hawkins has a small but very significant role too as Willy Wonka's mother. I will admit it is disappointing that she won't be a part of Paddington 3 because she turned down a role in that movie to be in this one, but she does do a really great job in this movie, so I am glad that she did get to be a part of this. Surprisingly, the performance that I was most looking forward to in this movie was Hugh Grant as an Oompa Loompa. And yes, as depicted in the intro, as soon as I saw that he was going to be in this movie and who he was playing, I genuinely went, I need to see this. It's just such a random choice, but it weirdly works and I can't explain why. His performance is pretty much what you see in the trailer. So yes, he is absolutely entertaining. I actually do quite like that they play around with the idea that maybe Wonka might be imagining him. Don't worry, he isn't. But I was more surprised by how little screen time he actually has. I was convinced that the Oompa Loompas, especially the one played by Hugh Grant, was going to have a much more prominent role in this movie but he doesn't. I do like him overall. I love that they kept the design from the Gene Wilder movie, plus the song as well, but I still would have liked to have seen a bit more of him or have other Oompa Loompas factoring into the story. I will admit the CG work that they have used on him to bring him to life, and throughout the rest of the movie, to be honest, is pretty good, especially what they do with the giraffe. It is on the verge of Uncanny Valley in some moments of this movie, so I do think that there are times where I think that they could have just given it a smidge more of a touch-up. But overall, I do think that the effects work is really good in this movie and it is used when necessary. Wonka, as a movie, does do a lot more stuff for real than I was expecting, with lots of practical effects and real locations and sets. There's a load of wire work, especially during the dance sequences. The fat suits that Keegan-Michael Key wears are pretty good. The makeup and the hairstyle on everyone is really good. And there's some very Roald Dahl-esque designs in this that don't look out of place. There's a lot of imagination that has gone into the design of this film. From the bright and colourful visuals, the practicality of Wonka's cane and all of the inventions he creates, the look of the various Wonka chocolates. According to Patterson Joseph, who plays Slugworth, they did actually experiment with different ingredients and flavours to actually bring those chocolates to life, so whenever someone actually does eat them, the reactions on their faces are a lot more realistic than you might think, and it does sound like they did go down quite well on set. And then even the costumes as well. They're fairly simple overall, but each costume does give you an idea of the character. I think how Wonka looks himself is really good, and it blurs together a few different interpretations whilst also sticking close to the source material. Even his hat looks really good as well. Nobody seems to be mentioning this, but I think it looks like it's made out of chocolate. I know it's meant to be like this, this leather hat that's all kind of stitched and all tatted and all sorts, but the colour that they've gone for as well as the pattern on it, it does look like it is made out of chocolate. There is so much imagination and creativity in this movie and it really does add up to something very special. I got a real sense of joy and wonder from this movie that I very rarely get from a lot of movies nowadays outside of things like the Paddington movies. And the reason why I'm bringing up the Paddington movies in this review is because of just how many connections that those movies do have to this. It has a similar vibe and tone. The director, Paul King, is also the director director of the two Paddington movies, same as the writers and a load of the actors. A lot of the visuals and vibrancy of the shots are quite similar, and just the overall style of it too. I'll put it this way, if you like the Paddington movies, both the first and the second one, and there's no way that you can't, I think that you'll really enjoy this. It isn't a perfect movie by any means. There's quite a few plot conveniences that I think some viewers might not be happy with. The comedy might not land with everyone. I think some people will see it as a bit too cartoonish, and I've even seen some people say that it's too polished. I'm not really sure what they mean by that, to be honest. A lot of this stuff doesn't really bother me when I'm enjoying something, and I really enjoyed this movie. I'm also fully aware that this movie does kind of embrace the more fantastical elements a lot more, and it does feel more like a fantasy movie, far more so than the previous movies ever did. It leans into that fantastical nature of Willy Wonka's story in a really joyful way, and a large part of the reason for that is that it's a full-on musical. I was fully aware that this was a musical when I went to go and see this, and I deliberately avoided listening to the soundtrack or looking up the track listings because I wanted to have that initial experience of not knowing what was actually coming, and I want to be able to experience these songs within context. I did the exact same thing with The Greatest Showman and La La Land, 
And in all honesty, it is better to do that. But unlike those movies, there is a sense of familiarity with a lot of the songs that they do use in this one. The majority of the songs featured in this movie are original, but it does feature a couple from the Gene Wilder movie, and every single one of them are excellent. There's some real toe tappers and all of the songs help add to the story and atmosphere. The dance sequences are really well choreographed, they make full use of the environment, and I think that there are some sequences in this movie that I think will go on to become iconic, especially the sequence with the balloons. They're really lively and animated, they're performed extremely well, and there's a bit of an old school quality to it that I really liked. The music in this movie from composer Joby Talbot is really good, and it really does suit both the story and the characters. It is very good overall, it is really beautiful, it is really fun and lively, but it also has some really great callbacks too. The soundtrack, in my opinion, is one of the key parts of why this movie is as good as it is, and I really did like it overall. Overall, I thought this film was brilliant. It's a load of fun with an excellent cast, fantastic songs and choreography, an imaginative and playful vibe that honours what's come before whilst also being its own thing. The story is simple and easy to follow. It's something both original and a bit different, which to me is a welcome change. Visually, it looks great with bright, vibrant colours and cinema cinematography. The location, sets, costumes and most of the effects are really good too. Yes, it can be a little cartoonish, the humour doesn't always land and some of the effects could do with a touch up. That might put some people off, but for me it didn't bother me that much. I had a load of fun with this movie and I'll fully admit that I left the cinema with a huge smile on my face. As a movie for the whole family, I think that this is one of the best of the year and an absolute must watch over the holidays, but I would definitely highly recommend this to everyone, especially if you're a fan of the Gene Wilder movie or the original book. All I'll say is try not to go into this movie with the mindset of comparing it to the previous films. It does have its connections and references, but it is pretty much its own thing. So with all that being said, my rating for Wonka is an 8 out of 10. I really enjoyed this movie and I'm really looking forward to seeing what it is that this team does next, which I believe is going to be Paddington in Peru. I know there is a different director working on that movie because Paul King, the director of the first two Paddington movies, was working on this one, but hopefully that doesn't have any impact on it whatsoever and I'm really looking forward to seeing it. Anywho, that is pretty much everything I wanted to say in this review, so if you have watched this video, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed Enjoy this content please like and subscribe and be sure to hit the notification button to keep up to date on everything that is going on on here if you have seen wonka let me know down in the comments what you think about it plus if you have any suggestions for any future rewind reviews you would like me to do let me know down below christmas is around the corner so keep an eye out for some festive themed videos very soon but until then thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time on rewind reviews see you guys